So here's a picture of what the kitchen used to look like. This is back in 2010, that's when we bought the place. It's not the original build, but it's what the previous owners renovated too. And in retrospect, I wish I had taken some videos of it before I gutted it, but I didn't. I do, however, have the next best thing, and that is a 3D version of it. I initially modeled this in Maya, and then brought it into Unreal. So, you're looking at a pretty typical, standard L-shape layout. There's no island. It's roughly around 80 square feet, and it's an okay amount of space for a family of four and a dog. We have a table in the middle, two high chairs on either ends, and for the most part, it does feel fine. Just any time we have family or friends over, that's when it starts to get kind of cramped. Laminate countertop with IKEA cabinets. Bulkhead at the top. This one houses the ducting for the range hood. And this one, all the wiring for the lighting. The dishwasher, microwave, and the fridge. They were pretty old, so we replaced them as soon as we moved in. They happen to be all white as well to match the electric stove here, which I wasn't a fan of. More cabinets surrounding the fridge, and behind the louver closet door is a small pantry. And then behind this sliding pocket door is the dining room, which we never use. And it connects to the living room through here. So, with this room not doing anything, and the kitchen becoming increasingly more cramped, we decided to just merge the two. This wall is not a load-bearing wall, so I could get rid of it. I just had to figure out where to move all this stuff in the meantime. In the end, I threw this out. The microwave conveniently died on us, and I moved the remaining cabinets to this back wall so that we could continue using them while I worked on the rest of the kitchen. I removed the door, the backsplash, bulkhead, ducting, the wall, and then moved the oven to the adjacent side so it wasn't in the middle of the kitchen. At the same time, I removed the flooring for the dining room, and that's how we lived for the next 13 months. This is me taking the wall and the flooring out. My wife took this video back in November of 2018. A um, couple weeks after this is when the game went into finaling. So by the time I got back into the reno, it was either February or March of 2020. And we kicked that off by purchasing our new fridge, which was quite a bit bigger than the existing fridge. So to accommodate that, I had to throw this out, move this to that wall, got rid of the shelves, and remove this chunk of framing so that I can put in the new framing. I also added an outlet to the midsection because that's where the microwave is going to be when this is all filled in. Anyways, that's the reframing around the fridge. Already has three coats of mud on it. Just need to sand it one more time before rolling on the primer. So this is what it looks like now. Um, yeah, nice and neat and orderly, fabulous backsplash over there, some random holes that I found behind the cabinets, there's stuff coming out of them, and then you got this 40 amp feeding the stove, just kind of hanging out, super up to coat and everything, so now Here's what the new kitchen is going to look like. Sort of. It probably won't look exactly like this, but this is a pretty good stand-in proxy for the most part. There are things that I'm definitely leaning towards, like the flooring. I like this color. I like the width. Same with the countertop. I'm thinking some variant of creamer beige. I've got travertine for backsplash. That's more of a tonal suggestion rather than the material itself. For the cabinets, walnut face for sure. Not sure about the sides. 
And as for the hardware, I've got knobs on here right now, but they can be pulls. Door arrangements up here is completely up for change. And then there's the ceiling. I like the look of shiplap, but again, we'll see if Loxoon likes it. I'm pretty sure she will. And for the lights, the three above the island and the three above the table, I do want them to be something, you know, noteworthy. Um, there's actually only two things that are sort of absolute. One is the fridge, because we bought it already, and the other is the gas range, and for that I want a blue star. Other than those two things, everything is open for change, but in a nutshell, this is roughly what I want it to look like for now. I know one thing that my wife wants that is missing from this rendering, and that is all the natural, warm, earthy vibe. That's probably not going to come into play until much later in this stage, but that is definitely one of my main priorities because I am designing the look and the tone of this kitchen to complement her pottery, hence all the open shelves. Okay, so there's the completed reframing. Now that side is 64 and 3 quarters, and this side is exactly 30 inches. And for the final sanding pass, at this point I'm not looking to really sand anything away. I'm just knocking down any bits that are kind of sitting on the surface. I'm also sanding the rest of the wall as well. So I switch over to a 120 grit and I'm sanding it pretty hard. So I'm actually trying to scuff it up as thoroughly as I can to get the best primer adhesion possible. This is where the drywall meets the brick wall and it needs a, a corner bead install. Um, the process is exactly the same. You'd slap on some mud, press in the bead, and squeeze out the excess. Only problem is there's nowhere for that excess to go here other than into the gap. So it went into the gap. Now, normally this is not a big deal. If this was regular joint compound, you would just dig it out with your knife. But in this case, I used concrete fill mixed with glue. I always do this for corner beats, which that in itself isn't the issue. The issue is that I let it cure because I didn't clean it out in time, which means it has gone just past the point of being easily taken off. certain parts I had to resort to a chisel just to break the contact and then I used a bent coat hanger to pull out the pieces. of a turd move there letting it cure like that and a total waste of time so the subsequent mudding had to be done a little differently so by loading the mud onto the wall first then guiding the knife into the gap and then squeezing it until I saw the mud coming out from the other end of the knife So there's the first pass, uh, lots of bubbles, lots of liftoffs, uh, not too concerned about that right now, I mainly wanted to just get the bead covered, so I'm going to come back to it tomorrow, sand, and do another coat. Here's the second coat, no bubbles, a few liftoffs here and there. Um, same thing tomorrow, I'll sand it and do the final coat. So here's the final pass, 
Now I'm going to mask off the brick edges to get it ready for the primer. Kind of a tedious chore, but if you get paint on brick, it can be a, a real pain to get it off. Starting the painting, cutting around the edges, the switches, receptacles, and all the other borders. And then moving on to the rolling. Using a 9-inch roller with a 3 8 nap, rolling on two coats of Bullseye 1, 2, 3. And of course, in between the coats, you have to sand. This is especially important after the first layer of primer, where all the fiber on the surface of the drywall paper gets set into that unpleasant, gritty feel. You kind of want to smooth that out before rolling on the next coat. But anyways... It's time to basically repeat the whole process. And that's pretty much it. I'm going to leave this in here for now, but I will make a separate video later just about painting. And there it is. The north side is pretty much done. The framing is finished. Fridges are back in its place. I'll fill in the empty spaces when I make the cabinets. And after that, the only thing left to do would be the final painting but that's not going to be until much later. In the meantime, I can now move on to the south wall. There's a lot of stuff to do here. This is the wall with the windows, the plumbing, the electrical, the ducting, the cabinets, the shelves, and everything else, including the appliances. So a ton of work left ahead there. For the next video, I'm probably going to start with the bulkhead. But for now, that's about that.